What are you gawping at? I'm not gawping at anything. Mm, so long as we know. Know what? Oh, give over, do. Yeah. Was yesterday your birthday? Does it look like flame in June? Hey, I'm a bit out of my depth here. <clears throat> now, come on, Annie. Enough's enough. What have I forgotten to do? Who said you'd forgotten to do anything? Hey, give me strength. Well, what are you going on about? I have not said a word. No, and it'd be better if you did. All right. That's what I'm going on about. Oh. <clears throat> well, you might say, oh. It's uh, just a bit of fun. A bit of fun? Tucked away at the back of your bowling bag? Oh, give up. Oh, I've heard about fellas of your age. They go off the rails. You want to watch it. Now, look, I've told you it was a bit of fun, that's I all. I can just see you going into the shop to buy it. All I hope is you had the decency to get it somewhere away from here, that's all. I didn't go in no shop. You got it on the market for all the world to see? No, somebody give it me. Oh. I'm not going telling tales and getting anybody into trouble. Oh. Well, when you next see her, give her my kind regards and tell her she's welcome to you. Oh, you're talking ridiculous, Annie. Playing ridiculous. Am I? What about that new sports jacket, then? What about it? You've never bought a sports jacket in December in your life before. Well, it fitted me. Price was right. I'd money in my pocket. <laughs> How to impress somebody. I don't know what's got into you. Straight, I don't. I've never heard the like of this in my life before. London Lovelies, number four. That's what's got into me. And until you come out with a proper explanation, I'm going on thinking worst. And the next time that Lorraine Chadwick's not having a ball back. Old friends are best. Staunch, faithful and true. So a friend of my heart, season's greetings to you. From our old Nora and the kiddies. Hey, who are they? Oh, I don't know. It comes every year. Have you seen my pen anywhere? Here. Yeah. You know, it's the same every year. I say I won't send any and I'll finish up buying what everybody's left. Let's have a look. Hey, ma'am, I think these are Catholic. Are they echoes like? Well, they're religious of some sort. Oh, you know, and I do like something a bit showy. Something with a bit of ribbon and some of that glitter stuff about it. How much were they? Tuppence each from one of them parson's shops. No verses either. Ma'am? What? Lend us five bar. No. Oh, go on. I said no. You stinking rotten awful, you are. I know. Well, why? Because I said no, that's why. What did they say at the labour today? Why did they say the labour today? Can't you never think of anything else? I might, when you get work. When Nelson gets his eye back. If you want to know, they said, well, Mr. Tanner, and how would you like a smashing little temporary job, sorting parcels on piecework, just while the lousy 25th? But when do you start? I don't, it were nice. Do you mean to say you've got the teacher sit there and tell me you turn the chance of good work away? It wasn't good work, I've already told you. It were nice. I don't want to go working nice. You don't want work at all, that's your trouble. Here we go. Once again. and for all, when are you going to settle down to something? Oh, I can do better than that. Such as? I don't exactly know what some are better than that. Oh, yes, you're marvellous. You can do anything, anything at all. Knit fog, break eggs with a big stick, anything. Just you name it, Dennis Tanner can do it. He's marvellous. He's that marvellous he can't even get himself a blasted job. All right! I'll get myself a job. When? Now, this minute, I'll walk into town and I'll get myself a job. Yeah, and I know what sort of a job it'll be and all. Oh. The last time you went into town to get yourself a job, you finished up doing time for breaking and entering. Well, if you're thinking of getting up to any of your old tricks again, and you think I'll take you back, well, I won't. Peace on earth, goodwill to all men. Best wishes, Elsie Tanner. Hey, all right? Thank you, love. Not got your decorations up yet, then? No, not yet. We're doing them tomorrow. How about you? Oh, why bother? Will it be me to see them? Oh, you're not having your Lucilla home, then? No. Did think about it. 
No. Oh, I expect they'll give them a marvellous Christmas there. I know someone who rang up an orphanage once trying to give them a Christmas cake. Matron said they'd enough cakes for Muldoon's picnic. Oh, oh Harry. Right, Jack. Hey, can you finish with the doings, Jack? What doings? You know that. Oh, 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 yes. What uh, doings is this? Well, nothing. It's uh, just something I lent to Jack, that's all. No. Oh. It wouldn't be something called London Lovelies number four, would it? Aye. Hmm. Yeah. are. Thanks. Did you show it him? Aye. Was it? Well, he didn't actually say, but I think so. You think what? Well, you know that Mr. Cromford at Bowling Club? The stuck-up one thinks he's it. That's the fellow. Uh, oh, he's painful. You know that granddaughter of his, the one he's always going on about? Couldn't be mm. a famous actress or something. Mm. Yeah. Look. Oh, give over. They wear less than that on the sands at Morecambe. Oh, it's not that. Just look at her face. It's clarted. Oh, you could scrape that makeup off with a shovel. Uh, it's her, though, isn't it? Oh, no doubt at all. But she's no London lovely. They come from somewhere Liverpool way. Right. Hey, you. Who, me? There's just been a bobby knocking at your door. Bobby? Yeah, I'll be back. Have you a drop of milk to spare, Esther? We've run out. Oh, all right, love. Sit yourself down. I'll just go and get you some. Right, thanks. Here you are, love. I've just in a jug for you. Oh, thanks very much, Esther. Oh, I didn't want all that. Just enough for morning. Where does she seem? She's very low. Oh, she'll soon buck up. I'm beginning to wonder. Whether they did right in letting her out, I mean. Oh, she'll soon feel better. I know, but it's just that... Well, she seems to think everybody's talking about it. The sooner she gets that idea out of her head, the better. Oh, I did think she might like to go to the pictures, but she said she might see somebody she knew and she didn't want them staring. When she's been out a few times, she'll soon stop worrying about that. What's she doing now? Just sitting there. Oh. Well, why don't you tell her to come in with me for a bit? There might be something on the telly. Oh, yuck. What's that? Gods, whatever are you doing there? So I made up my mind I'd say... I've got it. What? I bet that's coppers come about the licenses for his whippets. Now, what was I saying? You was talking about Christmas cards. Oh, yes. I've not sent our barrel one this year. How many have you had so far? Four and a calendar. I like a nice calendar. There's a picture of a Scotty dog with a pipe in his mouth and a bit of lucky heather gummed on, you know. How many have you had, Minnie? Just one from the vet. You say you haven't had mine yet? Not yet. Well, I posted it yesterday. Are you sure? Positive. You can come and have a look on our mantelpiece if you like. There's just the one. Of course, our Lily's having private ones this time. Oh, your Lily's getting very luggage in advance, isn't she? I'm not so stuck on them private ones myself. I like to be able to turn a card over and see how much it's set them back. You want to watch out? Somebody might go doing it back on you. Not me. I bought them boxed. Hey, what struck a bit public? Oh, it'll be that choir going round from St. Michael's. Hey, what happens to the money they get? You know, your acres and pennies mount up. What do they do with the money when they get it? That's what I want to know. It goes to the aged and infirm. Ah, it makes you wonder. That vicar's wife toddling around in a fur coat. Don't tell me she got that on what he earns. Our Lily's having a fur coat for Christmas. Oh, will you give over about your Lily? No, she's got two, you see. Her Wilf's going in for the Masonics. Yeah, I say. Look, it isn't that lot from St. Michael's after all. I'm not looking, then they won't come near us. Besides, I've got no change for fur coats for Vicar's wife to toddle around in. <coughs> <coughs> Would you care to give to the Glad Tidings Mission Fund? Ah, Mrs. Sharples. I see you're partaking of a little stimulant. Knocking about then. 
What do you think you're doing here? I've come home for Christmas. Have you? I suppose you know the police master's after you. No, no, I didn't know that. However, did you get here? Walked it. Walked it? All the way? You couldn't have. I did, and now I've got all in my wellies. It's all the 12 miles. But why? I want it to come home for Christmas. Well, have a lovely time there. I've heard all about it. Yes, but I want it to come home. Now then, Chuck, be a brave soldier. You know you can tell your dad things. Yes. I want it all about them. It's just that it was Christmas. It's not, not well Sunday. Well, it is there. And those that had somewhere to go, I went home yesterday. And I was left with the ones that hadn't. And they said he doesn't want you. Of course I want you, you silly Billy. And I've sent all your presents there. I don't want my brother. What the shall I do? Christine, look. Here's four pennies going. Ring up the police for you and let them know she's all right. Oh, it's all right. I don't need any money. I'll dial 999. Don't ring police, Master Tumme. We won't, but we've got to let them know where you are, haven't we? Here. You've not finished your sandwich. Come on. It's no good, she'll have to go back. Why? Well, for one thing, I put into work over the holidays. Oh, if that's all that's worrying you, forget it. I'll have her. Oh, let her stop the holiday out. Who's going to look after her during the day, though? Oh, we'll work it out somehow. Oh, you couldn't make her go back, Harry. It'd be a crying sin. I suppose. Can I stop? If you do. Yes. I promise to be a good girl and go back after Christmas without any trouble. Hmm? Cross your heart and hope to die. Hmm? All right, you're on. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> it's a witch hunt, that's what it is. That glad tide is locked out for a poor old woman's blood. Now, how can you be sure of that? Has that lad ever come singing round the pubs before? Answer me that. Well, now I come to think about it, this is the first time. I can just see that rotten committee getting together to seek me out in me wantonness. You are? Me wantonness. That's how they talk. You want to hear them. We will go down to Sodom and Gomorrah and seek out Mrs. Sharples. Poor old woman that's never did anybody any harm in her life. Now, don't upset yourself. I couldn't be more upset if I tried. Look, when that Leonard Swindley said something about partaking of a little stimulant, I could have let him have this half a mouth straight in his face. Ah, but you didn't. You just said good evening and borrowed tuppence out of my change. Hey, whose side are you on, Martha Longhurst? There's no sides to it. Oh, isn't there just? All I know is I'm out of a job. What will you do? Oh, one of my lousy daughters will have to have me. Oh, it may not come to that. I wish I could think you were right. But in their eyes, I am a Jezebel. I am the scarlet woman in their temple. Oh, now do try and calm down. You sound too much like play acting. Play acting? This is nothing to the play acting that'll get it to try to get me out. Come on. But why do I have to sleep here? Why can't I sleep at home in my own bed? Because your bed's not hers, and where's your manners? And don't be so ungrateful. Here we are. No, you'll be all right with hey, me, won't you, love? Eh, hey, yes, it's just that... Just that what? Well, well, when I run away, I told the others I'd be sleeping in my own bed tonight. Well, you will be near us, damn it. For heaven's sake, you're only next door. I'll have to crack on to them as I did. Well, the bedding's easy enough, but what are you going to wear? She can wear one of my pyjama tops. No, I've got a nightie that's a bit shrunk up. <laughs> It'll drown her, but it's the best we can do for the price. I'll just slip up and get it. Oh, oh no, don't worry. Why not? It's way past your bedtime. Couldn't I just stop up for once? Just for once? Just for a bit? No, you couldn't. Oh, you're dead and mean. Now, look here, Lucy. You've had enough of your own way for one day. I'll not be a minute. <laughs> What's all this in there, Doc? Mm. Well, what are you after, then? I'm not after anything. Mm. Oops, so daft. Do you think I'll catch you when I go back? Oh, they'll have had time to get over it by then, won't they? Now, don't go spoiling your holidays worrying about that. Did they send you my school report? Aye. Not bad, eh? Fair to middling. Don't take no notice of what Miss Radford says about my compositions. She doesn't know a good composition when she sees one. She's back to you. And how do you know what she says? I thought the reports were private to parents. Me and Sonia Week, he went and had a look in the desk. Oh? What? I've forgotten your Christmas present. Oh, never mind. I wouldn't care, but I've been weaving the things since August. I don't know what we're going to do about yours. Send them all there, except your granddad's. I haven't posted that one yet. 
Do you get me what I said? Now, don't be so impatient. Wait and see. If I tell you what I was weaving for you, will you tell me? That's fair. I'll, I'll put the electric blanket on for you. Now, this is the best I can manage. It is aired. Well, see, thank you. I was just going to. Thank you very much. Now, what about some hot milk before you go up? Oh, no, thank you. I only have hot milk when I'm poorly. Coco. Oh, I shouldn't bother her, Esther. She'd never be much of a one for drinks late at night. Oh, come on, hurry up and get undressed. Well, what are you waiting for? I don't like getting undressed when people's watching me. Oh, we are growing up. Come on, Harry, I've got a fire in the front room. No, I'd best be going, love, anyway. Night, God bless. Night, bless. Night, Esther, thanks. She'll be all right here. Hey, Dad. Yeah? Merry Christmas. Oh, Mother, for heaven's sake, will you put that duster down? It's all right. I did it myself this morning. What are you doing your hair for? It's sticking out like sore fingers. Well, are you going out tomorrow night? No, not so now. How's Malcolm? He's all right. Well, well, don't you know? No. Look, could you put this grip in here? It's a bit difficult to do it by myself. Well, everything seems set before I went into hospital. <laughs> that was before you went into hospital. Hey, I like Malcolm. Oh, it was all right, I suppose. We'd have met a lot of boys like him if we'd still been in Abingdon Road. Well, we're not, are we? Don't you ever wish we were back there? No. All oh, that was five years ago. Anyway, there was nothing very special about it, as far as I can oh. remember. Your dad and me worked hard to get that house. Look, ma'am, we've been through this time and again, and you've just got to face up to it. We haven't got the house, and we haven't got the shop, and all the talking on the earth won't bring them back. I'll never understand how he could have let the business get into that state. Well, then don't try. You'll only go upsetting yourself if you do. Oh, that's right. Keep me calm. Well, it's the one subject you will dwell on. That's half your trouble, you know. Yes. And you know what your trouble is. You've got enough go in you. You meet a nice boy like this Malcolm Wilkinson, and what do you do? You're so lackadaisical, you just let him go off. How do you know? Well, it doesn't take much imagination. Well, you're wrong. Well, everything was all right when he came to tea before I went into hospital. Was it because of me? Don't flatter yourself. No, come on, was it? I'll bet it was. A boy like him wouldn't want to marry a girl, not, well, not with something like that in her family. Now, who said anything about marrying? Well, people do get married, you know. I like Malcolm. Oh, you mean you like that flashy red sports car and that far back voice? Oh, well, it's your own life. You must lead it as you think fit. Look, ma'am, why don't you go round to Esther? She's expecting you, you know. No, no, I don't feel up to it. Well, don't you think you ought to go round and thank her for those flowers? Well, I'll be seeing her. Oh. Now, you sure you're all right? You don't have to worry about me. Gee, I thought you were going to have one of your funny turns. Well, you know what thought did? That lot try and get me out, they're going to get a mouthful and they least expect it. I'll tell you that for nothing. Oh, well, I'd best be off then. Good luck, Ina. My drink is water bright, water bright, water bright. My drink is water bright from the crystal stream. Come in. Well? I just wanted to uh, have a word with you about the social on Friday and the children's party. Oh, you did, did you? Sly. Yeah. Pardon? You think you're going to get me to do all the dirty work and then come New Year, you'll get me out. You caught me at it tonight, didn't you? Saw me in Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, look, uh, perhaps last night I was a little overheated. 
Perhaps I said one or two things that I didn't really mean. After all, this is the season of goodwill, and if you choose to enjoy... I do I'll... choose. And I'll do it without any help from you. You're very fond of pushing people around, aren't you? You even push the committee around. My dealings with the committee are hardly any business of yours. Oh, they aren't, aren't you? Well, let me tell you. When it comes round to the Messiah time of the year, I like to hear a good Messiah in this hall, and not some of your Judas Mackey something foreign tripe. <sighs> Go on. Put me out in the street. There's my bed. There's my bits and pieces. Put them all out. Miss Newton, can you come here, please? Quickly. Stay with her. I'm going for a doctor. I haven't let it stand for a minute. It's red hot. What are you grinning at? Nothing. It looks like it. Smiling at you? Oh, I've got a smut on my nose or something. No, nothing. Maybe I'm just happy. One does never cease. Are you really pleased about the baby? Of course I am. Do you want it to be a boy or a girl? I don't mind. You must have some preference. All right, girl. I don't, really don't mind as long as it has two arms and legs and everything. Wouldn't you love it if it didn't? Well, I must say I like the idea of a girl best. I mean, you can, you can dress them up in that. What do we call her? Linda. You know what? One Linda in the family is bad enough. That's one thing I'll never forgive my mum for. How she ever could have chose it, I don't know. Linda, it's as common as muck. All right, then we won't call her Linda. Well, then what? You choose. Well, I somehow fancy Dawn. Dawn? I've never heard this name. That's what I mean, you see. It's a bit unusual. Dawn Chevesky. Oh, heck, I'd forgotten that part of it. Well, that puts paid to Dawn. We have to get a house. What did you say? We have to get a house. You can't have the baby in the flat. Come on, girl. There's nothing to cry about. You know, before, when I was all ratty, mm -hmm. and I said you was good. I mean it. You are good. Oh, Eck. Teddy and Liddy. We're going to get a house. Where? Where? Oh, we have to have a look round. Well, I think you're doing the right thing. I presume you aren't sleeping on the settee tonight. Yes, well, I've moved out into the back bedroom. You can have my bed. I've put your grips on the towel, boy. I'll take me cocoa up. You're going to do your roots? Oh, sometimes I wish I'd never heard the word Anna. Night, ma'am. Night, love. So, somebody's going to be a daddy. And somebody's going to be a grandma, well... <laughs> Good night, Good night. Sometime, then. Oh, uh, sorry. Where do these come from? Oh, God, no. Where did you get them? <laughs> 